So standard equipment for direct laryngoscopy, you're going to begin with a laryngoscope and an appropriately curved blade. You have many options. My device of choice would be a Macintosh 4 laryngoscope. Whatever device you're most comfortable training with, practicing with, and working with clinically should be the device that you choose. You need an endotracheal tube. This is an 8-0 endotracheal tube. Appropriate sizing for the average adult male patient would be a 7.5 to an 8.5 tube, one half size smaller for female patients. A bougie should be on the chest of any patient whose airway you're managing, not necessarily as a rescue or difficult airway device, but often as a primary intubating device, particularly for those of us who do not intubate or manage airways on a regular basis. We need a 10cc syringe to inflate the cuff of the endotracheal tube, and then some method, in this case a twill tie, of securing that endotracheal tube in place. Endotracheal tube placement should be confirmed with multiple different techniques, including continuous capnographic waveform monitoring, or more commonly found in the emergency departments, colometric CO2 detectors such as this. So intubation with direct laryngoscopy. In trauma patients, this procedure is going to be done consistently with inline stabilization with a C-spine collar opened or removed. You're going to begin with a laryngoscope, choosing the appropriate blade. You should choose a blade that you are trained with, that you practice with, and that you're comfortable with. And in this case, we're going to use a Macintosh 4, a curved blade. The initial step is using your right hand, your dominant hand, do a cross finger mouth opening to create some space and get the teeth out of the way. At this point, the blade is introduced onto the patient's tongue in the midline. And the right hand comes off and moves to the back of the patient's head. Because this is a trauma patient, we're unable to manipulate this patient's neck. The laryngoscope is walked gently in the midline, down the tongue, lifting as you go. Essentially, all we're trying to do is identify the epiglottis. Once we've identified the epiglottis, we know where our airway is, although we may not see it. We're going to walk the blade down the tongue, essentially looking for the epiglottis and identifying it. Once it's identified, we're going to ensure that the tip of the laryngoscope is in the vallecula, engaging the hyoepiglottic ligament and lifting the epiglottis up out of the way. At this point, our assistant's going to pass us a bougie. The bougie should be on the chest for every intubation that you do, not as a difficult airway device, but essentially as a primary intubating device for those of us who infrequently manage airways. We're going to advance the bougie down through the vocal cords, occasionally feeling tracheal clicks as we go. If you don't feel tracheal clicks, that's fine. Don't make critical decisions based on tracheal clicks. If that bougie is in the right position through the vocal cords, it will come to a hard end point giving you this information that it's in the right place. Once that bougie comes to its hard endpoint, your system will load the endotracheal tube onto the bougie and advance it down to your fingers. At this point, you take control of the endotracheal tube, advance it along the bougie, through the vocal cords, holding on to the endotracheal tube as your assistant inflates the cuff and removes the bougie. It is only at this point that you remove the laryngoscope, essentially allowing those soft tissues to collapse down against the endotracheal tube. Tube confirmation is done with a colorimetric CO2 device or continuous end tidal capnography, and our bag is squeezed.